Hadith 1. Narrated Aisha, the wife of the Prophet, Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, said, No calamity befalls a Muslim but that Allah expiates some of his sins because of it, even though it were the prick he receives from a thorn. Hadith 2. Narrated Abu Sa'id al Qudri and Abu Huraira, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, No fatigue, nor disease, nor sorrow, nor sadness, nor hurt, nor distress befalls a Muslim, even if it were the prick he receives from a thorn, but that Allah expiates some of his sins for that. Hadith 3. Narrated Kaab, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, The example of a believer is that of a fresh tender plant, which the wind bends it sometimes and some other time it makes it straight. And the example of a hypocrite is that of a pine tree which keeps straight till once it is uprooted suddenly. Hadith 4. Narrated Abu Huraira, Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, said, The example of a believer is that of a fresh tender plant, from whatever direction the wind comes, it bends it, but when the wind becomes quiet, it becomes straight again. Similarly, a believer is afflicted with calamities, but he remains patient till Allah removes his difficulties. And an impious wicked person is like a pine tree which keeps hard and straight till Allah cuts, breaks, it down when he wishes. Hadith 5 Narrated Abu Huraira, Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, said, If Allah wants to do good to somebody, he afflicts him with trials. Hadith 6 Narrated Aisha, I never saw anybody suffering so much from sickness as Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him. Hadith 7 Narrated Abdullah, I visited the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, during his ailments and he was suffering from a high fever. I said, you have a high fever. Is it because you will have a double reward for it? He said, yes, for no Muslim is afflicted with any harm but that Allah will remove his sins as the leaves of a tree fall down. Hadith 8 Narrated Abdullah, I visited Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, while he was suffering from a high fever. I said, O Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him. You have a high fever. He said, Yes, I have as much fever as two men of you. I said, Is it because you will have a double reward? He said, Yes, it is so. No Muslim is afflicted with any harm, even if it were the prick of a thorn, but that Allah expiates his sins because of that, as a tree sheds its leaves. Hadith 9 Narrated Abu Musa al-Ashari, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Feed the hungry, visit the sick, and set free the captives. Hadith 10 Narrated al bara bin Azib, Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, ordered us to do seven things and forbade us to do seven other things. He forbade us to wear gold rings, silk, debaj, istabrak, kasi, and mithara, and ordered us to accompany funeral processions, visit the sick and greet everybody. Hadith 11 Narrated Jabir bin Abdullah, Once I fell ill. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, and Abu Bakr came walking to pay me a visit and found me unconscious. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, performed ablution and then poured the remaining water on me, and I came to my senses to see the Prophet. I said, O Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him. What shall I do with my property? How shall I dispose of, distribute, my property? He did not reply till the verse of inheritance was revealed. Hadith 12 Narrated Atta bin Abi Rabah, Ibn Abbas said to me, Shall I show you a woman of the people of paradise? I said, Yes. He said, This black lady came to the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, and said, I get attacks of epilepsy and my body becomes uncovered, please invoke Allah for me. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, To her, If you wish, be patient and you will have, enter, paradise, and if you wish, I will invoke Allah to cure you. She said, I will remain patient, and added, 
but I become uncovered, so please invoke Allah for me that I may not become uncovered. So he invoked Allah for her. Narrated Atta, that he had seen Umm Zufar, the tall black lady, at, holding, the curtain of the Kaaba. Hadith 13 Narrated Anas bin Malik, I heard Allah's messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, saying, Allah said, If I deprive my slave of his two beloved things, that is, his eyes, and he remains patient, I will let him enter paradise in compensation for them. Hadith 14 Narrated Aisha, when Allah's messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, emigrated to Medina, Abu Bakr and Bilal got a fever. I entered upon them and asked, O oh my father! How are you? O oh Bilal! How are you? Whenever fever attacked Abu Bakr, he would recite the following poetic verses, Everybody is staying alive among his people, yet death is nearer to him than his shoelaces. And whenever the fever deserted Bilal, he would recite, two poetic lines, would that I could stay overnight in a valley wherein I would be surrounded by Adkir and Jalil, two kinds of good-smelling grass. Would that one day I would drink of the water of Majunna and would that Shama and Tafil, two mountains at Makkah, would appear to me. Then I came and informed Allah's messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, about that, whereupon he said, O Allah! Make us love Medina as much or more than we love Makkah. O Allah! Make it healthy and bless its mood and sa'a for us, and take away its fever and put it in Al Jufa. Hadith 15 Narrated Abu Uthman, Usama bin Zaid said that while he, Sa'ad and Ubay bin Qab were with the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, a daughter of the Prophet sent a message to him, saying, My daughter is dying, please come to us. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, sent her his greetings and added, It is for Allah what he takes and what he gives, and everything before his sight has a limited period. So she should hope for Allah's reward and remain patient. She again sent a message, beseeching him by Allah, to come. So the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, got up and so did we, and went there. The child was placed on his lap while her breath was irregular. Tears flowed from the eyes of the Prophet. Sa'ad said to him, What is this, O Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him? He said, This is mercy which Allah has embedded in the hearts of whomever he wished of his slaves. And Allah does not bestow his mercy, except on the merciful among his slaves. Hadith 16 Narrated Ibn Abbas the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, went to visit a sick Bedouin. Whenever the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, went to a patient, he used to say to him, Don't worry, if Allah wills, it will be expiation, for your sins. The Bedouin said, You say expiation? No, it is but a fever that is boiling or harassing an old man and will lead him to his grave without his will. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Then yes, it is so. Hadith 17 Narrated on us, a Jewish boy used to serve the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, and became ill. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, went to pay him a visit and said to him, Embrace Islam, and he did embrace Islam. Al-Musayyab said, When Abu Talib was on his deathbed, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, visited him. Hadith 18 Narrated Aisha, during the ailment of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, some people came to visit him. He led them in prayer while sitting, but they prayed standing, so he waved to them to sit down. When he had finished the prayer, he said, An imam is to be followed, so when he bows, you should bow, and when he raises his head, you should raise yours, and if he prays sitting, you should pray sitting. Abu Abdullah said, al Humaydi said, the order of, this narration has been abrogated by the last action of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, as he led the prayer sitting, while the people prayed standing behind him. Hadith 19 Narrated Sa'ad, I became seriously ill at Makkah and the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, came to visit me. 
I said, O Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him. I shall leave behind me a good fortune, but my heir is my only daughter, shall I bequeath two-third of my property to be spent in charity and leave one-third, for my heir? He said, No. I said, Shall I bequeath half and leave half? He said, No. I said, Shall I bequeath one-third and leave two-thirds? He said, One-third is all right, though even one-third is too much. Then he placed his hand on his forehead and passed it over my face and abdomen and said, O oh Allah! Cure Saad and complete his emigration. I feel as if I have been feeling the coldness of his hand on my liver ever since. Hadith 20 Narrated Abdullah bin Masood, I visited Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, while he was suffering from a high fever. I touched him with my hand and said, O oh Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him. You have a high fever. Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Yes, I have as much fever as two men of you have. I said, Is it because you will get a double reward? Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Yes, no Muslim is afflicted with harm because of sickness or some other inconvenience, but that Allah will remove his sins for him as a tree sheds its leaves. Hadith 21 Narrated Abdullah, I visited the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, during his illness and touched him while he was having a fever. I said to him, You have a high fever, is it because you will get a double reward? He said, Yes. No Muslim is afflicted with any harm, but that his sins will be annulled as the leaves of a tree fall down. Hadith 22 Narrated Ibn Abbas Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, entered upon a sick man to pay him a visit, and said to him, Don't worry, Allah willing, your sickness will be, an expiation for your sins. The man said, No, it is but a fever that is boiling within an old man and will send him to his grave. On that, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Then yes, it is so. Hadith 23 Narrated Usama bin Zaid, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, rode a donkey having a saddle with a fadakiyah velvet covering. He mounted me behind him and went to visit Sa'ad bin Ubada, and that had been before the Battle of Badr. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, proceeded till he passed by a gathering in which Abdullah bin Ubay bin Salul was present, and that had been before Abdullah embraced Islam. The gathering comprised of Muslims, polytheists, that is, idolaters, and Jews. Abdullah bin Rawaha was also present in that gathering. When dust raised by the donkey covered the gathering, Abdullah bin Ubay covered his nose with his upper garment and said, Do not trouble us with dust. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, greeted them, stopped and dismounted. Then he invited them to Allah, that is, to embrace Islam, and recited to them some verses of the Holy Qur'an. On that, Abdullah bin Ubayy said, O oh man! There is nothing better than what you say if it is true. Do not trouble us with it in our gathering, but return to your house, and if somebody comes to you, teach him there. On that, Abdullah bin Rawaha said, Yes, O oh Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him. Bring your teachings to our gathering, for we love that. So the Muslims, the pagans, and the Jews started abusing each other till they were about to fight. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, kept on quietening them till they became calm. Thereupon, the Prophet mounted his animal and proceeded till he entered upon Sa'ad bin Ubada. He said to him, O Sa'ad! Have you not heard what Abu Hubab, that is, Abdullah bin Ubayy, said? Sa'ad said, O Allah's Apostle! Excuse and forgive him, for Allah has given you what he has given you. The people of this town, Medina, decided unanimously to crown him and make him their chief by placing a turban on his head, but when that was prevented by the truth which Allah had given you, he, Abdullah bin Ubayy, was grieved out of jealousy, and that was the reason which caused him to behave in the way you have seen. Hadith 24 Narrated Jabir, the Prophet, 
peace and blessings be upon him, came to visit me, while I was sick, and he was riding neither a mule, nor a horse. Hadith 25 Narrated Ka'ab bin Ujra, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, passed by me while I was kindling a fire under a cooking pot. He said, Do the lice of your head trouble you? I said, Yes. So he called a barber to shave my head and ordered me to make expiation for that. Hadith 26 Narrated al Qasim bin Muhammad, Aisha, complaining of headache, said, O, oh, my head! Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, said, I wish that had happened while I was still living, for then I would ask Allah's forgiveness for you and invoke Allah for you. Aisha said, Wathukliah. By Allah, I think you want me to die, and if this should happen, you would spend the last part of the day sleeping with one of your wives. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Nay, I should say, O oh my head! I felt like sending for Abu Bakr and his son, and appoint him as my successor lest some people claimed something or some others wished something, but then I said, to myself, Allah would not allow it to be otherwise, and the Muslims would prevent it to be otherwise. Hadith 27 Narrated Ibn Masud, I visited the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, while he was having a high fever. I touched him and said, You have a very high fever. He said, Yes, as much fever as two of you may have. I said, You will have a double reward? He said, Yes. No Muslim is afflicted with hurt caused by disease or some other inconvenience, but that Allah will remove his sins as a tree sheds its leaves. Hadith 28 Narrated Sa'ad, Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, came to visit me during my ailment which had been aggravated during Hajjat al wada I said to him, You see how sick I am. I have much property but have no heir except my only daughter. May I give two-thirds of my property in charity? He said, No. I said, Half of it? He said, No. I said, One-third? He said, One third is too much, for to leave your heirs rich is better than to leave them poor, begging of others. Nothing you spend seeking Allah's pleasure but you shall get a reward for it, even for what you put in the mouth of your wife. Hadith 29 Narrated Ibn Abbas, when Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, was on his deathbed, and in the house there were some people among whom was Umar bin al Khattab, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Come, let me write for you a statement after which you will not go astray. Umar said, The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, is seriously ill and you have the Quran, so the Book of Allah is enough for us. The people present in the house differed and quarreled. Some said, Go near so that the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, may write for you a statement after which you will not go astray, while the others said as Umar said. When they caused a hue and cry before the Prophet, Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Go away. Narrated Ubaidullah, Ibn Abbas used to say, It was very unfortunate that Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, was prevented from writing that statement for them because of their disagreement and noise. Hadith 30 Narrated as Sahib, My aunt took me to Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, and said, O oh Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him. My nephew is ill. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, touched my head with his hand and invoked Allah to bless me. He then performed ablution and I drank of the remaining water of his ablution and then stood behind his back and saw, Qatam an Nabuwa, the seal of prophethood, between his shoulders, like a button of a tent. Hadith 31 Narrated Anas bin Malik, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, None of you should wish for death because of a calamity befalling him, but if he has to wish for death, he should say, O oh Allah! Keep me alive as long as life is better for me, and let me die if death is better for me. Hadith 32 Narrated Qais bin Abi Hazim, we went to pay a visit to Kabbab, who was sick, and he had been branded, cauterized, 
at seven places in his body. He said, Our companions who died, during the lifetime of the Prophet, left, this world, without having their rewards reduced through enjoying the pleasures of this life, but we have got, so much, wealth that we find no way to spend it except on the construction of buildings. Had the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, not forbidden us to wish for death, I would have wished for it. We visited him for the second time while he was building a wall. He said, A Muslim is rewarded, in the hereafter, for whatever he spends, except for something that he spends on building. Hadith 33 Narrated Abu Huraira, I heard Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, saying, The good deeds of any person will not make him enter paradise. That is, none can enter paradise through his good deeds. They, the Prophet's companions, said, Not even you, O Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him? He said, Not even myself, unless Allah bestows his favor and mercy on me. So be moderate in your religious deeds and do the deeds that are within your ability, and none of you should wish for death, for if he is a good doer, he may increase his good deeds, and if he is an evil doer, he may repent to Allah. Hadith 34 Narrated Aisha, I heard the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, who was resting against me, saying, O Allah! Excuse me and bestow your mercy on me and let me join with the highest companions, in paradise. Hadith 35 Narrated Aisha, whenever Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, paid a visit to a patient, or a patient was brought to him, he used to invoke Allah, saying, Take away the disease, O the Lord of the people. Cure him as you are the one who cures. There is no cure but yours, a cure that leaves no disease. Hadith 36 Narrated Jabir bin Abdullah, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, came to me while I was ill. He performed ablution and threw the remaining water on me, or said, pour it on him. When I came to my senses, I said, O Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him. I have no son or father to be my heir, so how will be my inheritance? Then the verse of inheritance was revealed. Hadith 37 Narrated Aisha, when Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, emigrated to Medina, Abu Bakr and Bilal had a fever. I entered upon them and said, O oh my father! How are you? O oh Bilal! How are you? Whenever Abu Bakr got the fever he used to say, Everybody is staying alive with his people, yet death is nearer to him than his shoelaces. And when fever deserted Bilal, he would recite, two poetic verses, Would that I could stay overnight in a valley wherein I would be surrounded by Adkir and Jalil, two kinds of good-smelling grass. Would that one day I could drink of the water of Majanna, and would that Shama and Tafil, two mountains at Makkah, would appear to me. I went to Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, and informed him about that. He said, O Allah! Make us love Medina as much or more than we love Makkah, and make it healthy, and bless its sa and its mud, and take away its fever and put it in Al-Jufah.